Good evening, I'm David Kramer with the Alaska Weather Program. As always, please visit our website, weather.gov slash Alaska. You can get updates to our forecast or check out any watches, warnings, or advisories that we have out for your area. Also call our weather info line, 1-800-472-0391, getting the updates to the forecast who that means as well. We'll start off with a quick look at the warnings and advisories that we do have out for the area. Starting off for the eastern part of the Kenai Peninsula, specifically targeting the Portage Valley area, an advisory for blowing snow is going to be out and that is going to be in effect uh, Sunday afternoon into the evening time frame as we move to the east into southeastern part of the state and the southern portions here into the uh, central portions we do have winter weather advisories out for snow in the southern location so south of Juneau but that does include the Sika area and down through Ketchikan and areas to further to the south. We do have that winter weather advisory for snow until 9 p.m. this evening. Up near Juneau, it's going to be out until 3 a.m. on Sunday. And then as we look up by the Klondike Highway, wind chill advisory out also until 3 a.m. on Sunday. Moving up into the interior part of the state, we'll start with the Alaska Range, a winter weather advisory for blowing snow. It's going to be out until midnight Sunday night. As we look a little bit to the north and to the eastern parts of the interior, including the Eagle area, a uh, wind chill advisory out, and that is going to be in effect until midnight tonight, so that is Saturday night. And then up along the eastern portion of the Arctic coastline, wind chill up there as well, and that's going to be in effect until 6 a.m. on Sunday. Moving to the west coast of the state, we do have winter storm warnings out for several different areas. All of these in red here are winter storm warnings for snow and for blowing snow. That's going to extend from the Yukon Delta up through the lower Yukon Valley and up near Galena as well, including areas of the eastern portions of the Norton Sound area, and then out by the Bering Strait coast down to St. Lawrence Island. And those are going to be in effect until Monday evening time frame, a little bit earlier drop dead time for the St. Lawrence Island and Bering Strait area. Again, for all of these, check our website and you can find out exact details for your location if you're in any of these affected areas. As we take a look, we'll see some of the cause of this. We have a large low pressure system out to the, uh, just to the south of the western Aleutian Islands with the frontal system extending through the area, starting to bring a lot of cloud cover and snow, and then eventually rain with some of that warmer air coming up. We'll watch this again. Watch the front start to push through the area. Clouds in advance of the front, but starting to bring in some of that southerly flow, transitioning some of the snow over to rain. Taking a look now out over some of the uh, eastern areas, starting in the Gulf, We'll take a look at why they're getting so much snow. There's a low pressure system here bringing a lot of shower activity into places all along the panhandle, helping to bring in some snow to southeast Alaska. Then out over the mainland part of the state, not a lot of activity. You can see some clearing there, resulting in some of those lower temps, and especially as we start to combine with winds in eastern locations, we start to see some of those colder wind chills. When we take a look at the weather for the remainder of the day, we do have high pressure out over the interior part of the state, just some light showers underneath that in eastern locations. As we drop down into the Gulf of Alaska, the low pressure moving through the eastern part of the Gulf of Alaska, bringing in that southwesterly flow, helping to bring in showers throughout much of the Panhandle area, resulting in some of those uh, winter weather advisories for snow. Another low further to the south, bringing up a little bit warmer air, but not quite making it to the Panhandle yet. South Central Alaska not seeing a lot of activity, nor is the North Gulf or the North Arctic coast. And then as we look into the west coast of the state, out ahead of our main system coming through the area, we do have a trough pushing through the Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula area, bringing some snow and blowing snow out over there. And then we do have over the YK Delta some snow as well. But our main front coming in from our 945 millibar low, very deep, very strong low, pushing through the area, coming from the south, bringing all that warmer air, changing over the snow to rain for areas of the eastern Aleutians, central Aleutians, and out near the western Aleutians as well. However, areas a little bit further to the north, they're still seeing some of the snow from this system is still cold enough to be snow, and we are seeing that for the Pribilof Islands and the Alaska Peninsula. As we move into tonight and that front pushes further into the Bering Sea, we're going to see that rain snow line push further to the north, approaching the Pribilof Islands and starting to make its way into areas of the Alaska Peninsula. 
behind that system, a nice and warm air starting to bring in some rain for the eastern and central Aleutian Islands and starting to switch back over to snow for the western Aleutian Islands as the low slowly pushes off a little bit to the east, bringing in some of that colder northerly flow to the western Aleutians. Up along the west coast, the snow line is pushing further in for areas around Bristol Bay up into the YK Delta, all through the Seward Peninsula, Kotzebue Sound areas, and some of those western portions of the interior. But as we move up along the Arctic coast, we are going to see uh, effects from high pressure out over the eastern portion of the state, resulting in some areas of fog drifting up into the Brooks Range area and eastern portions of the interior. High pressure still dominating much of south central, keeping of clear skies or at least no snow for the area and then down in the panhandle area low pressure to the south of the area still bringing in some snow throughout much of the panhandle as we look into sunday those effects from that low as the low pushes off and diminishes we are going to see the snow diminish as well for the panhandle area and our high pressure continuing to move off to the east allowing this frontal system to push further into the southwest portion of the state bringing snow now into prince william sound area throughout Kenai Peninsula area up into the Alaska Range and all throughout the central and western portions of the interior. And still not making it north of the Brooks Range, however, still going to be a little bit more clear up there. And then along the west coast, continuing to see snow, blowing snow conditions from that front still pushing through southwest Alaska with warmer air behind it, bringing rain throughout the central eastern Aleutian Islands and into the Alaska Peninsula with some colder air further to the west starting to make it into the western Aleutian Islands. And finally, on Monday, that low is still pushing now towards the central Aleutian Islands with its front extending up towards the Norton Sound area. Starting to weaken a little bit, we're seeing some of the colder air hang on through much of southwestern portions of the state, including Bristol Bay, up into the Seward Peninsula area through Kotzebue Sound as well. Colder air wrapping around, starting to push into the western Aleutian Islands and into the central Aleutian Islands, but still some warm air for areas out by the eastern Aleutian Islands, Alaska Peninsula, and for Kodiak Island. We do have a low forming off of the old front that is pushed into the Gulf of Alaska, bringing the rain snow line right along the North Gulf Coast. However, most interior locations are going to remain snow. Then as we drift into the southeastern portion of the state, interior locations, higher elevations should remain snow. But warmer air from this new system pushing in, uh, switching over a lot of the low-lying areas and out by the Gulf of Alaska over to rain. Taking a look now at our temperatures, starting off Sunday morning in the Panhandle area, dropping down below freezing for all locations, warmer further to the south, dropping down to as low as 13 by Haines. And as we move into South Central Alaska, dropping below zero for most locations. Some of the areas right along the North Gulf Coast staying in those positive single digits, a little bit warmer at Kodiak, dropping down to 19 degrees and a little bit colder as we get into Glen Allen area, minus 35 expected there. In the interior, right around minus 30 mark for most locations, a little bit warmer out to the west. As we can see some of the warmer air pushing in those warmer temperatures out by southwest Alaska, making it into the western portions of the interior Galena, only getting down to minus 23. Up in the Brooks Range, still pretty cold up there. Bettles at minus 43. And then along the Arctic coastline, dropping down to right around minus 30 for many locations up there. And as I pointed out earlier, we are seeing some of that warmer air come into the west coast. Uh, only getting down to minus 6 for Nome, staying in single digits for some of the YK Delta. Still a little bit colder down by Dillingham and King Salmon, staying uh, just below the zero mark. And then right around freezing for eastern portions of the Aleutians and for the Alaska Peninsula, but mid-30s for the central Aleutians from that warm push to the south and St. Paul getting down to 27 degrees. Afternoon highs for Sunday, we are going to get right up to around 40 degrees with that warm air extending into the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, up above freezing for some places around Bristol Bay, getting near 20 for areas around Bethel and the rest of the YK Delta. Colder as we get further to the north, but we can still see that warm air pushing into portions of the western interior. Below zero highs for the Kotzebue Sound area, staying well below zero all along the Arctic coast. Some of the interior are a little bit warmer, but still below zero for the most part in south central Alaska, getting into the teens. And then as we move into the southeastern part of the state, getting up to right around freezing. As we move into Monday morning, dropping down into the 20s and into the teens for northern locations of the Panhandle. Staying above zero for most of south central as we continue to see the effects of the warm air coming in. Staying in around 9 degrees for Kenai. And then as we move up into the interior, a warmer but still below zero for those Monday morning lows. Colder up as we get north of the Brooks Range, dropping down to right around minus 30. 
up there and then down into the Kotzebue Sound area, staying below zero in the negative teens, but into the single digits are right around zero for much of the Norton Sound area, and then dropping down into the teens for YK Delta, and only into the 20s for the Bristol Bay area, and then dropping down to staying above freezing for most locations of the Alaska Peninsula. Cold Bay a little bit colder, 29 degrees there, dropping down into the mid-30s for the Aleutian Islands. Colder out by Shimia, 24 degrees expected low there. And then we're going to see warm air come in all on Monday, pushing into much of the mainland part of the state, bringing temperatures up above zero for much of the interior. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For our aviation segment, we'll start off out over the Bering Sea with our flying weather. Sunday morning, we do have widespread IFR conditions over the Bering Sea with a mix of MBFR and IFR conditions along the Aleutian Islands into the Alaska Peninsula. We also have some of those areas of IFR extending into areas around Bristol Bay, up for the YK Delta, and out into western portions of the interior. So you get along the Arctic coastline expecting to be VFR conditions with some areas in the upper Yukon Valley seeing some MBFR conditions as well. Much of the rest of South Central Alaska should be VFR for Sunday morning and then VFR primarily for the Panhandle area with some isolated areas of MBFR by the Hyder area and out by the eastern parts of the Gulf of Alaska. So you move into Sunday afternoon, conditions clearing up for all of the Panhandle area should be VFR. Then we do have IFR with our front pushing towards South Central Alaska, bringing some IFR and MVFR conditions to Prince William Sound, eastern parts of the Kenai Peninsula into the Alaska Range as well. We have IFR conditions extending from southwest Alaska into the central portions of the interior up towards the Brooks Range as well, but we're going to stay VFR along the Arctic coastline. Down the west coast of the state, primarily IFR conditions as we get to the Seward Peninsula and areas further to the south, and then widespread IFR for the Bering Sea, Aleutian Islands, and Alaska Peninsula. For Monday morning, continuing to see IFR conditions over the Bering Sea with some breaks to marginal conditions for the Aleutian Islands, but still primarily IFR. IFR conditions extending into southwest Alaska, up through the YK Delta area, and through much of the interior and southern portions of the Brooks Range. Some isolated areas of MVFR also along the Arctic coastline, down in south central Alaska, still seeing primarily IFR conditions along the North Gulf Coast into Prince William Sound and for the Alaska Range, and then MVFR conditions making their way back into the Panhandle area. By Monday afternoon, IFR conditions extending throughout the Panhandle along the North Gulf Coast as well and then up into the Alaska Range. Much of the interior is going to be MVFR and IFR conditions, and some of those MVFR conditions sneaking through the Brooks Range into the North Slope area. From the Norton Sound area down through the Bristol Bay area, expecting IFR conditions, and for the Bering Sea, primarily IFR conditions with some mix of MVFR conditions for the Aleutian Islands. Taking a look at our pass is starting up north in Antarctic Pass, expecting to see VFR conditions. Adigan Pass also should be VFR for the day on Sunday. And then going down to southern portions of the Alaska Range, starting with our more southern location, VFR to IFR for Lake Clark. That should happen a little bit earlier in the day, whereas Merrill, a little bit further to the north, will also transition from VFR to IFR, but be a little slower to reach those IFR conditions. Moving up to Rainy Pass, VFR to IFR. Again, this is going to happen a little bit more slowly, more likely in the afternoon. And then Windy Pass going from VFR to IFR even further to the north, expecting those IFR conditions to be more likely in the evening. As we move out east towards Isabel Pass, VFR conditions are expected. Mentasta VFR as well. Down at Tanita Pass, going to go from VFR to marginal conditions. This is going to be a little bit later in the day, more likely to happen in the evening to see those marginal conditions. And Portage should move from VFR to IFR. For Chilkoot and White, both expected to be VFR throughout the day on Sunday. Taking a look at our freezing levels. We do have that warmer air coming in from the south. We have our 2,000 foot freezing level right on pace with our surface line, bringing in that warm air from the south to the eastern Aleutian Islands area. For icing, we do have below 7,000 feet for the western Aleutians. And then from Kodiak Island area through southwest Alaska and the Norton Sound area, we do have some icing between 5,000 and 10,000 feet near the Kenai Peninsula, between 2,000 and 7,000 for southwest Alaska. And then as we get closer to the Norton Sound area, between 5,000 and 10,000 expected. Our jet stream, we have one branch of the jet coming in through the state out of the north, our northwestern portion of the state out of a westerly direction. 80 knots is expected coming down over the Panhandle area, about 105 knots out of that northwest direction. The rest of the jet should stay south of our area with 140 knots just south of the eastern Aleutian Islands and Alaska Peninsula. For 9,000 feet, we do have southerly flow out over the eastern portions of the Bering Sea, eastern Aleutian Islands as well, getting as high as 60 knots just to the south of the eastern Aleutian Islands. 30 to 40 knots in much of the Bering. Southwesterly flow over mainland Alaska, 35 to 40 knots in southern locations, dropping out to 25 as we get further to the north, and then 25 knots out of a westerly direction over the Panhandle. 
for 3,000 feet, 10 to 25 knots over the panhandle coming around that ridging to move over mainland part of the state, 15 to 25, getting stronger up to as high as 55 over western portions of the state out of a southerly direction, but dropping down pretty quick by the Brooks Range to 15 knots. Not over much of the Aleutians in Bering, 30 to 40 knots coming into the Bering Sea as high as 55 to 60 as we get to the western portions. For our turbulence all along the Aleutian Islands, below 3,000 feet, below 4,000 feet as we get closer to the Alaska Peninsula and over south central Alaska, below 5,000 feet is expected. Further to the north over the west coast, below 4,000 feet. Then out over the northern parts of the Panhandle towards Yakutat, below 5,000 feet is expected. Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills, where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only going to get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. 
Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only gonna get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Well, first, let's talk about what it's not. It's not a floating island of trash, like a garbage dump or a landfill. It's also not the only patch. They exist all throughout the ocean, and the Pacific Garbage Patch just happens to be the most famous. Garbage patches are large areas of marine debris concentration that are formed by rotating ocean currents called gyres, kind of like big whirlpools that suck things in. A garbage patch is made up of tiny plastic pieces called microplastics that are less than five millimeters long. It's more like pepper flakes swirling in a soup than something you can skim off the surface. You might come across some larger items like plastic bottles, but it's possible to sail through a garbage patch and not see anything. And they're a big problem for the ocean and us. People often ask why we can't just scoop up all the marine debris in the ocean. And the answer is, unfortunately, it's just not that simple. The first challenge is the sheer size of these garbage patches. They're huge. They're constantly moving with ocean currents. And there's debris from the ocean surface all the way down to the sea floor. Not to mention all the marine life we would disrupt if we tried to just scoop up debris. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention and we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep trash out of the ocean in the first place. And we can participate in things like shoreline cleanups. It's a lot easier to deal with debris before it gets to the ocean. Because until we stop marine debris at the source, we'll just be cleaning it up forever. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back for the marine section of the forecast. We'll start off with a quick look at our ice edge. We do have ice now pushing south of St. Matthew Island, not quite to the Pribilof Islands yet, but getting closer, and then out covering much of Bristol Bay and Port Hyden area. A little gap there to the north of the Alaska Peninsula, but ice has moved down quite a bit uh, closer to the peninsula itself. And we still have some ice out in Cook Inlet, Kamishak Bay, and the northern portions of Shelikoff Strait. Taking a look now at the marine forecast starting in southeast Alaska in the inside waters for Sunday. We do have a north to northwest flow. Stronger as we get further to the north, 35 knots up by Lynn Canal area, down to 15 knots as we get further to the south. And then out over the gulf, we have northwesterly flow, 25 knots with seas as high as 15 feet. And up near Yakutat, easterly flow around 20 knots. Then on Monday, Picking up and becoming more northerly or southerly out of the Gulf of Alaska, 40 to 45 knots stronger as we get further to the north. Seas as high as 19 feet in the north. Inside water, southeasterly flow 25 to 30 knots until we get up by Lynn Canal area. Northerly winds around 20 knots there. As we look out over south central Alaska, starting off in more eastern locations, we do have easterly flow 20 to 25 knots, including Prince William Sound. Stronger as we get closer towards the Barren Islands, southeasterly flow 35 to 40 knots there. Up in Cook Inlet, weaker up north 25 knots out of a northeasterly direction, picking up to around 40 knots as we get further south in Cook Inlet. Then out by our, east, our western portions of the Barren Islands, easterly flow 45 knots there. Seas as high as 12 to 13 feet around the Barren Islands. On Monday, flow in uh, Cook Inlet, 25 to 35 knots, stronger as we get further to the south, out by the Barren Islands, east to northeast flow around 35 knots, and then in the northern parts of the Gulf, easterly flow up to a size 40 knots there, seas 18 to 20 feet, and Prince William Sound, northerly flow 20 knots with seas 4 feet. Around Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, southeasterly flow around Kodiak Island, 35 to 40 knots, seas getting up to around 18 feet. And then as we get into southern portions of the Alaska Peninsula, winds out of southerly direction, 30 knots, seas up to 23 feet. Other side, seas quite a bit lower, 30 knots out of a southerly direction, seas only around 7 feet. And then up in Bristol Bay, easterly flow, 35 knots. On the Bering side of the peninsula, southeasterly flow, 20 knots on Monday. And then as we move to southern locations, we do have southerly flow, 20 knots there, seas as high as 19 to 20 feet. 
becoming more easterly around Kodiak Island, 22 25 knots expected. For the Aleutian Islands, starting off in the eastern Aleutian Islands, southerly flow 30 to 35 knots strongest on the Pacific side with seas as high as 25 feet on the Pacific side. For the central Aleutian Islands, southerly flow 25 to 30 knots. And then as we get out by the western Aleutian Islands, we'll be coming out of the northeast. Storm force winds of 50 knots there with seas as high as 35 feet. On Monday, dropping quite a bit in and changing directions to northwesterly flow, 35 knots, seas as high as 23 feet. As we get by the central Aleutian Islands, flow will be coming much more southerly, 20 to 25 knots, picking up as we get by the eastern Aleutians, still out of a somewhat southerly direction, 25 to 30 knots expected. Along the west coast of the state, primarily a northeasterly flow, 25 up to as high as 40 knots until we get out by St. Matthew Island, 45 knots there. South side of Nunavik Island, easterly flow 35 knots, and down by the Pribilof Island, southerly flow 25 knots with seas up to 14 feet. Then on Monday, by the Pribilof Islands, southeasterly flow 20 knots, getting up to 25 knots south of Nunavik Island. Still northeasterly north of the island, 30 to 40 knots, and 40 knots out by St. Matthew Island as well with seas up to 19 feet. Along the west coast of the state, uh, northerly locations, 15 knots out of northerly direction, picking up to around 40 knots as we get closer towards the Bering Strait. And then up along the Arctic coastline, southerly winds, 10 to 20 knots, strongest as we get closer towards Ukiagvik. Then on Monday, dropping down 10 to 15 knots along the Arctic coastline. And as we get to the west coast of the state, northerly winds picking up from 10 knots all the way up to 40 knots, strongest by the Bering Strait. Quick recap for tonight's weather, we do have a low pressure system down to 947 millibars, pretty strong, moving by the western Aleutian Islands with the front moving through the southern part of the Bering Sea. A lot of warm air coming up behind this, so we have snow out ahead of it and some blowing snow conditions out over areas of the southwest to include the lower Yukon Valley up by Galena. We have winter storm warnings out for these areas out by St. Lawrence Island as well for snow and blowing snow. But behind the front, warmer air bringing some rain to the central and eastern Aleutian Islands, starting to push into the Alaska Peninsula as well. High pressure out over much of the eastern part of the interior with some areas of fog underneath, and low pressure out over the Panhandle bringing some snow to the area where we have winter weather advisories for snow for much of the southern and central locations, and a wind chill advisory up in the northern stretches of the area. Down in south central Alaska, high pressure uh, clearing out much of the precip for the area. And with Alaska Weather, I'm David Kramer. Thanks for being with us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.